to the Metrodome. West region between the Iowa Hawkeyes with the ball and the black uniforms and the Duke Blue Devils seated number two in the region in white. Duke is leading two to nothing in a very scrappy opening minute of the game. Iowa coming in as the seventh seed. Dick Stockton here along with Bill Cunningham. The Hawkeyes beat East Tennessee State in a close down to the wire affair in round number one in the Duke Blue Devils. Easily defeated Northeast Louisiana with a great spurt in the second half. With the ball is Troy Skinner. And what we'll see is the defensive pressure of Duke. Will it, they take him out of their offense? Excellent backdoor play. Rodell Davis, whose steal of the inbound pass sealed the victory against East Tennessee State in the first round. And the winner of this game will take on the survivor of the next game here in Minneapolis between the University of Connecticut and Xavier of Cincinnati, Ohio. Rodell Davis. Ray Kubek committing the foul, and on the line is Rodell Davis, who has averaged 14 points in the last three games, and you're looking at an Iowa team that substitutes liberally, and that's Tom Davis' foul. In this game, I don't think the benches, in many cases, you'll find the bench of one team will wear down the other, but Duke has that depth as well. Tom Davis has taken both Boston College and Iowa to the regional finals. His team was a big shocker this year. They were picked to finish ninth out in the Big Ten, and here they are in the second round, trying to score an upset over one of the powers. And now we'll see that defensive pressure, the just token pressure to start out with by Iowa. As the game progresses, we'll see them picking up full court. Grand Hill, the freshman, and Bobby Hurley, the point guard. A lot of responsibility on Hurley's shoulders today. Starting out the ball game, it's his responsibility to get Leitner started and get him the basketball. Kubek tries a three from the corner, and there's Grand Hill, who is definitely headed for All-America status soon in his career. Pass. Hurley gets it to Leitner on a crisp pass, and Christian Leitner, who you were just talking about, is fouled and will shoot two. The officials working this game, Jody Sylvester from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Bobby Dibler out of El Paso, Texas, and Mark Reisling from Petaluma, California are the officials. And A.C. Earl, the leading scorer for the Hawkeyes, who has not started the last four and led the team in the opening game went over East Tennessee State is coming in the middle. I would think defensively, Iowa will pack it in with their zone, forcing Duke to prove to them they can shoot that three-point shot because there's only one Blue Devil Kubek, who is shooting over 40% from the three-point line. Mike Krzyzewski, who threw kind of a mini tantrum at halftime against Northeast Louisiana when his team led by only six and were playing in sluggish fashion. Well, and they had a meeting after that game to discuss it, their mental health. They felt that they were using it a little bit as an excuse, being mental fatigue, and that they had to overcome it. Here is pressure by Duke in the backcourt. Earl came in the game along with Val Barnes and a steal by Grand Hill. He intercepted the pass by Troy Skinner. Here's Kubek, a good long-range shooter. This is his second three-pointer, and A.C. Earl with the rebound. Barnes is number 20, Skinner 11, there in the backcourt. Chris Street is number 40. He'll be a big factor inside. Rodell Davis gets a good pass. Coming down with it is Thomas Hill of Duke, and he is fouled. We want to tell our audience that those expecting to see the Creighton-Seton Hall game out west in Salt Lake City and the Pitt-Kansas game in the southeast region in Louisville will be getting you to that game before long. Val was on Chris Street, 4-1 to one Duke leads. Team second. James Moses is into the game. Started at guard and the shot inside blocked Grand Hill's second shot missed and it's blocked again here comes Val Barnes for Iowa they have a three on two but they'll slow it down Barnes a two-point basket for Val Barnes and we see the difference that Earl makes with this ball club clogging that middle in the corner again Kubek Leitner on top Early goes for the three and that it's going to be an important factor to see this afternoon, Bobby Hurley's long-range shooting. And if Duke can't hit that, they're going to have to create their offense from the defensive end of the court, overplaying, denying, and creating turnovers. The Duke foul is against Thomas Hill, his first foul, and the second team foul on the Blue Devils. Each club has two. 
Opening minutes here. Iowa 21 and 10 on the year. And a lot of big late season victories against Indiana on the road and Ohio State. And for Tom Davis, a team with no seniors, they're all going to be back next year. Brian Davis, who had been the starter until Greg Kubek took over in the opening game of this series, has come in replacing Kubek. They bring in defense, and Kubek, the offensive player, goes out. A.C. Earl gets pushed inside, and that'll be the third team foul against Duke. Uh, they're going to have to establish, that is Iowa, an inside presence offensively, and that's where Earls has got to get the ball down in the low post, as we just saw, and convert some either hook shots or turn around jump shots. Now, Thomas Hill, who had a terrific game against Northeast Louisiana, has now picked up a second personal foul. Leitner defending against Earl, Duke playing man-to-man. -man. Man to man denying the passes. They have to, Iowa has to look for the back door. Slapped away from Earl. Here's Thomas Hill with Skinner defending the basket. Will count. And Thomas Hill is fouled as well. And that's what we're talking about, Duke. They have that ability defensively. They're so active. And here's Hill in the open court. And this is where he's at his best. Troy Skinner is first. And the great thing is he maintains his concentration going to the basket after being fouled. Thomas Hill, who scored 18 Thomas points in the Hill. first round, his third best scoring output of the year, has been a very clutch performer oh, offensively as of late. Uh, in, earlier in the year, during the regular season, he made the basket against Georgia Tech to win that ball game. And Hill gets three points out of it. Seven to three in favor of Duke. Feeding the pressure, Val Barnes pulls up. And I was going to have to hit those shots when they have the numbers advantage on the other end. Grand Hill in the lane. And it's 9-3. to three. Well, Mike Krzyzewski has to be very pleased in the way they're attacking this zone of Iowa. They're going right at it. They're looking to get to the scenes on the dribble and to make the shot for themselves or to pass off. Grand Hill already has four points and four rebounds. A.C. Earl goes up against Hill and gets his first points of the game. Grand Hill, the safety man, a three-on-one break. Thomas Hill is fouled inside. And if Duke can beat that pressure all day, they're going to have two-on-one and three-on-one. And that's what Mike Krzyzewski wants to do. He wants to treat that when they throw the ball over the top, just like a fast-breaking situation. In that case, it was three-on-one. And the great luxury Duke has is Grant Hill. This young man has the ability to play the backcourt. He's the backup to Hurley at the lead guard position, so many dimensions he brings. James Moses picks up the foul as he his first foul. Rodell Davis in the lineup now, and two shots for Thomas Hill. I want to remind you, those of you waiting to see the Seton Hall Pirates against Creighton at Salt Lake City and the Pitt Kansas School in Louisville, we'll send you out to those sites for the start of those games in just a moment. Nick Stockton and Bill Cunningham here, first of two at the Metrodome, and Duke has had things their way early on. Thomas Hill now with five points. And the Blue Devils now lead it 11 to 5. And Bill McCaffrey replaces Thomas Hill, who goes out with five points and two personal fouls. McCaffrey, a good outside shooter. Duke is really coming out and going after Iowa. Grand Hill lost control of it. And they're going to call Bobby Hurley for the foul. Hurley fouls James Winters, who started the game at center, but Duke is really getting good advantage of their traps in the court. Send up a cross foot. Give me an app check. There's a place in the friendly skies where not everyone's so friendly. Stop, hold it. Minimum. Check it out. Over 9,000 mechanics of United Airlines work Give here. Give me a mini grinder. They're picky, fussy, stubborn. But if you fly, they're the best friends you'll ever have. United, rededicated to giving you the service okay. you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. 
With a full-size sedan like this, power for effortless passing and on-ramp merging is a necessity. Caprice doesn't scrimp in this department. It doesn't scrimp in efficiency either, with the highest highway mileage of any V8 in its class. The more I tested it, I knew nothing was going to stop this car except its anti-lock brakes. Chevrolet Caprice Classic LTZ is Motor Trend Car of the Year. When you can win over attitudes like ours with a car like this, it's got to be good. And now it's easy to win with a heartbeat. Sometimes you wish they would never end. The care you show is just I'm driving. special. Friends know when to say when. The family of Budweiser beers is proud of all the friendships they've helped make. So when they remind you to please use a designated driver, it's all in the name of friendship. Friends know when to say when. It's a major reunion. Have we met before? When Simon & Simon's Jameson Parker catches up with Gerald McCraney. You're a Marine. That's right. Great way to disguise hair loss. Made to Dad, Monday. Well, the big conferences so far have been the bigs. The Big East and the Big Ten with a 10-2 record. The SEC has struggled. Four of the top six teams in the East have been eliminated. So that is a real scramble heading up to East Rutherford next week. Kevin Smith, the freshman guard, number 10, is in the game for Iowa. He's trapped by Hurley and Grand Hill. James Moses going baseline. And is called for the offensive foul, and that'll be the fifth team foul against the Hawkeyes. Well, whatever Mike Krzyzewski has said to his team, he really has them fired up defensively. This is a team that played outstanding ball going into the ACC tournament, but then North Carolina trounced them in the final, and they slumbered during the first half of the opening round against Northeast Louisiana, but they look sharp today. They do. Early in McCaffrey in the backcourt. Hill, Davis, and Leitner up front. Christian Leitner with his second basket. Well, that just poor defense by Iowa. They're not aggressive out there right now. Their zone is very passive. They have to get themselves going, but we saw this in their first game, falling down 10 points to East Tennessee State. Leitner trying to overplay, gets the loose ball, and another turnover, the fifth against the Hawkeyes. Two young teams out there. Only one senior who plays for Duke on a regular basis, Kubek, no seniors on the entire squad of Iowa. But McCaffrey hits from the corner. That's a two-point basket. He is the second leading scorer for the Blue Devils at 12 a game and a timeout called by Tom Davis. There's a thread that runs through our lives. A thread that binds us together. Friendship, family, pride. These are the values that endure. The best things have always been those that last. Chevrolet, the truck that lasts. Consistent performance. For 50 years, one life insurance company has ranked first in dividend performance more times than any other. Not everyone has heard of us. Some people have. Northwestern Mutual Life. Jeff Abbott just got his first paycheck and his first lesson in gross and net pay. This FICA. But who said he could take my money? You owe me 10. Can I borrow 20? I guess an allowance would be kind of an insult now, huh? <laughs> Luckily, Jeff knows where to make his dollar go far. Because at McDonald's today, new lower prices really give your paycheck a break. Will you get paid every week? <clears throat> Somewhere between crime and punishment is dark justice. Premieres Friday, April 5th on CBS Late Night. It's too hot to sleep. 
in the East Region at College Park, Oklahoma State and Temple advance to East Rutherford next week in the Eastern Region. 10-point lead for Duke. They have really kind of different goals coming into this game, Bill. Yeah, two weeks before the regular season, the Big Ten was, wasn't finished. Iowa was trying to make the tournament, and they're a young team. And I just wonder right now, do they feel happy and feel fulfilled with their basketball season getting this far? Duke, meanwhile, they're used to getting to the Final Four four times in the last five years, so they're looking beyond. I mean, they're not really looking beyond, but their goals are a much maybe loftier status than what Iowa would be at this stage. Well, that's where the experience comes in. They know what it takes, what they're going to have to do to get back to Indianapolis and have a chance to, to win a national championship. Christian Leitner chalks up his first personal foul of the game, and A.C. Earl, who hit 10 of 14 free throws in the Hawkeyes' opening round victory, is on the line. He was the leading scorer at 16 a game, but has not started the last four. Three for personal reasons. He had problems with a girlfriend and uh, misdemeanor charges against him. But this game, they're just going with winners again at center. And that All right, A.C. Earl makes it a nine-point lead for Duke. Now we'll see. And we're going to keep you posted on that game, of course. But there are two more games about to tip. First, Pitt and Kansas will fire up the southeast region from Louisville. And Creighton and Seton Hall from Salt Lake City. We'll get you to one of those two games right now as we continue on the road. Welcome to Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky for second round action of the Southeast region between the number six seed Pittsburgh Panthers and the third seeded Kansas Jayhawks. Get advanced to the second round with an overtime win in round one over Georgia. Kansas got by New Orleans. The winner of this game meets the winner of Florida State and Indiana. They will play tonight. Be more active. Leitner is guarded by Davis Hurley and wide open in the corner is McCaffrey taken down by Street here comes Davis again with Hurley defending and he throws the ball away just a good job by Hurley getting that good position defensively and forcing the turnover at seven turnovers caused by the Duke defense so far in this game it is 15 to 8 in favor of the Blue Devils who scored 102 points in their first round game, and that was a school record for most points in an NCAA tournament contest. And Mike Krzyzewski said he expects a high-scoring game today as well. Team fouls are five apiece. One thing Duke will do, when the shot goes up with this zone, they're going to send four players to the offensive boards. Early wide open for a three. Duke has had wide open shots from there, but have not been able to connect. And once again, Iowa takes over. The Blue Devils have had four chances, and all of them seem to be open from three-point range, but missed them all. Well, so far, all the offense Duke has been able to create has come from the defensive end of the court. Val Barnes and Skinner, along with A.C. Earl, Rodell Davis and Chris Street in there, and there's Davis inside. He's only 6'3", but looks like he plays well inside. Well, at that time, they spread the Blue Devils defensively. No help. McCaffrey travels with the ball. Now they say it's going to be a tie-up. It'll be Iowa's ball anyway with the possession arrow. Winters and Moses return to the lineup for the Hawkeyes. Moses is 6'4", guard, and Winters, who's a 6'5", Center, but A.C. Earl remains in the game as well. well. One player that could not lead the game for Iowa is A.C. Earl. He has just got to be out there to add things defensively as well as offensively. Hawkeyes have scored five straight points to cut the lead to five. The other point, if they're able to handle this pressure a while and force Duke, which they're not able to, would it tire the Blue Devils out? And there is Brian Davis. And a technical foul called against Davis for holding on to the rim. Davis thought he was going to fall and hurt himself. That's why he held on to the rim. Let's take a look and see if anybody is in the area where he could have had. Oh, yeah. You can see where he was bumped going up by Skinner. The basket will count. 
I don't think he was trying to hot dog. I don't think so either. Troy Skinner will shoot the two shots. He's the best free throw shooter on the team and one of the best in the Big Ten. You know, this is not a hot dog guy and a hot, not a hot dog team in general, dude. Mike Krzyzewski wouldn't allow it. And Iowa will have possession as well. And it's a five-point game again on the technical foul. Charged to Brian Davis for hanging on the rim. He had a lot of black shirts underneath, but he was trying to avoid it appears. Kevin Smith, freshman from Fort Worth. Now, Iowa has not seen any defense like this all year in the Big Ten or any place. Even Indiana? Even Indiana. They don't have the, as many athletes. This is the most athletic team Mike Krzyzewski has ever had, so he can really go out and pressure people. A.C. Earl fires it up, and Davis gets the rebound. Forced him into a bad shot. Seventeen to twelve in favor of the Duke Blue Devils. Nearly eleven minutes to go in the first half. Davis, too many steps. But the key right there. Moses did a great job defensively because he was rotating back over to Davis and stayed under control. He didn't go running at him where he would allow Davis to beat him on the dribble and cause that turnover. Brian Davis will sit down, and Greg Kubek replaces him in the lineup for the Blue Devils. He is the one of two seniors on the Duke team, he and Clay Berkeley are trying to get to the Final Four for the fourth straight year. And A.C. Earl with his fifth point of the game, he and Davis lead Iowa. I would expect Iowa to go to that set a little bit more. And what they do is just screen down for Earl to receive the ball, and they have no problem entering the pass. Thomas Hill gets his own rebound. Knocked away, and an Iowa foul, and that will be the... Sixth team foul against the Hawkeyes. One more, and Duke will be in the bonus. And it's Earl with his first foul. One thing when you're playing against this type of pressure Duke is applying, you're not going to beat them off the dribble. You're going to have to move yourself and move the basketball. Foul Barnes comes in along with Rodell Davis as Skinner and Moses lead the game. Here's Christian Leitner, no stranger to three-point shots. He hit 16 of them during the year. Inside, outside, he'll hurt you either place. Inside, Rodell Davis got surrounded. And they're going to call a, is it a Duke foul? No, sir. Type of violation, I'm not sure what they called. Winters to Davis. And Rodell Davis has seven points. Iowa on an 11 to 5 run since trailing by 10 points. This re resembles their first game here against East Tennessee State, falling behind and then coming back. Leitner has the shot blocked by Earl and a whistle. And another Iowa foul, and that'll be their 17 foul. Duke will be in the bonus now, but Earl got a piece of Leitner's inside layup. Third block shot. Meanwhile, Val Barnes picking up his first foul of the game, and that will send Christian Leitner to the free throw line. What differences have you seen with Leitner from last year until this? And what do you see in Leitner? I think toughness is the biggest difference I see. I've seen an intensity, he's more focused, and I think the experience playing on that world team with Mike Krzyzewski this past summer really has helped him as a basketball player. Now we'll see if Duke put, applies that full court pressure, which surprised me a little bit seeing them come out and go after the, this Iowa team full court. Well, you know, they say pressing teams don't like to be pressed themselves. That's true. Here is uh, Antonio Lang, freshman from Mobile, Alabama, who had eight points on pretty good shooting. And he'll replace Christian Leitner, who goes out with nine. Leitner is the game's high scorer. Here's that pressure, half court. Smith tries to get it inside to Earl, and it's out of bounds. And Duke gets the ball again. Iowa, a little reckless here, but that's the kind of end-to-end -end style that they play. Well, that's the difference between Smith and Skinner. Smith has the ability to beat his man off the dribble. Skinner cannot do that. McCaffrey over 
Smith. Might have forced that one, an Earl rebound. Six-point lead for the Blue Devils. Rodell Davis having an outstanding first half has scored nine points, and that's two more than his season's average. And a young man you really have to tip your hat to. He's had one major surgery and two orthoscopic surgeries this year. He saw the dream slipping away, but he has come back and was the hero of game one defensively. Against the Iowa zone, Hurley. Short rims a three. Kubek the rebound, but he'll be called for the foul. Great Kubek, and that will be his second. And we and we see the difficulty Duke is having shooting the perimeter shot. And if they had weren't creating the turnovers and the easy opportunities, we'd be looking at a different score. We're bringing you up to date on scores today in the second round, but also there are women's scores, which we'll bring to you also. CBS Sports will present the women's final four as well. Number 33, Grant Hill back in for Duke. Grant Hill checked back in the game for the Blue Devils. Kubek stays in with two personals. He didn't get over the line in 10 seconds. That was a violation. The officials missed it. Smith. The freshman front rims it and the rebound by Grant Hill. The, the problem with Smith sometimes he takes it too much as a personal challenge and doesn't think team. That time he makes the steal. James Moses makes it a two-point game. 22 to 22. Whatever Tom Davis said to this ball club at that timeout has really sparked the club. Grant Hill. And it was Bobby Hurley who sparked it. He fed Hill perfectly. And Grant Hill now with six points. And this is a high-scoring game with 8.13 to go. Traveling is called against Kevin Smith, who's getting an experience today playing against an experienced Final Four club, isn't he? Yes, he is, and he'll learn. He'll learn by this experience that you just got to move the ball in the air. You know, there are times and places when you want to beat the man off the dribble, but not against two people. Once again, Thomas Hill fights his way in. Thomas Hill. Seven points for Hill. Thomas Hill, I can't remember seeing him not finish off a play going to the basket in a breaking situation. Maybe getting fouled and missing the shot, but goes so strong to the basket. Well, he provides the toughness that Mike Krzyzewski looks for there. Chris Street, good turnaround move by Street, who's been the top rebounder for the Hawkeyes lately. Davis feels that Street has a great future ahead of him. Thinks he can be one of the top players that he's ever coached. As you see Duke, when they attack the zone, they have three of their big people running the baseline. Grant Hill with an air ball. Thomas Hill fights his way in. There's that toughness again you were talking about. He is something. Nine points for Thomas Hill. He and Leitner are the scoring leaders for Duke. Rodell Davis has nine for Iowa. Right now, Davis is on the bench. 28 to 22 in favor of the Blue Devils. Now the Blue Devils are back into a 2-3 zone. Maybe the reason Mike Krzyzewski thought his team was getting a little tired. Jay Webb has come in to give A.C. Earl a breather right now. Webb, a sophomore from San Jose at 6'8", is playing the low post. Val Barnes in and out in his attempt for a three-point shot. And Tony Lang rebounds for the Duke Blue Devil. <laughs> Iowa has not had the lead in the game. Duke was up by as much as 10. Tom Davis called the timeout, and Iowa has been scrapping with him ever since. Playing the type of ball that they've been playing the last few weeks. Kubek, he'll be looking for that long-range shot. There's the penetration, trying to force the defense to help. Bobby Hurley misses. Kubek gets the rebound. Kubek follow-up is good, and the Blue Devils now lead 30 to 22. But Duke is one for seven from three-point range. Uh, as we said, Duke is going to send four players to the offensive boards on every shot. And the problem when you're playing his zone, you don't match up defensively to protect somebody off the boards. James Moses on the baseline jumper. You surprised Duke has a two-to-one rate rebounding ratio on Iowa? No. 
because I think the, the, the big rebounder is sitting on the bench right now uh, for, for Iowa, and that's A.C. Earl. Antonio Lang, the foul, and we'll take a timeout. The women's final four in two weeks. Every business morning, while the rest of the world is getting up, UPS is guaranteeing overnight delivery before 10.30 to the most people, places, and businesses for far less than other companies charge. Webb hitting the first free throw. Jay Webb making the first free throw. Each team is in the bonus right now. Webb started the first half of the year. And now a timeout is called. Thirty to twenty-six, the Duke Blue Devils lead. Welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Dick Stockton along with Bill Cunningham and the Duke Blue Devils at one point, a 10-point lead over Iowa now. Up by only four, 30 to 26 with five and a half to play. Bill McCaffrey wide open. Outside shooting's been a problem for the Duke Blue Devils and they have committed another foul here. One and one at the other end. And that will be the first foul against freshman Grant Hill. And they're going to keep playing that way against Duke until they hit a few threes and force them to come out. Now, the, the two things that have kept Duke in this, allowed them to have this lead at this point, is their defense creating turnovers and the offensive boards. Iowa has shot nearly 60%. Duke just a shade over 40. And here is James Winters, a freshman from Joliet, Illinois. He misses the front end of the one and one, and a fine save in the corner by Brian Davis. So the lead is still four. And welcome to Minneapolis. Christian Leitner has just been fouled. No basket as Duke and Iowa end to end in what promises to be a high scoring game and with 5.09 to go in the first half it has been with Duke leading 30 to 26. Duke has had the rebounding edge. You see the high scores, but uh, the Blue Devils have missed a lot of outside shots that could have given them a bigger lead, Bill. Well, we've seen two different games to start out with. We've seen an Iowa team that came out sluggish. Tom Davis calling a timeout, getting his team focused again. Now they're competing. We saw a Duke team that came out defensively, denying, creating turnovers, easy opportunities. And also, the only other area they've been successful offensively is getting to the offensive boards. Duke just missed its first free throw of the game. They are now eight for nine. A.C. Earl, the only solid big man for Iowa, has picked up a second personal foul. And the lead is five. Leitner gets a hand on it, but Iowa maintains possession. One thing Kevin Smith has got to do, he's got to stay away from the sidelines. When you get on the sidelines, Duke is looking to trap him cuts off his passing angle and he's not very tall he's only around five nine so that's going to develop even more of a problem for him he's a freshman point guard on a team with no seniors smith off the glass rebound leitner and leitner took the extra step before the pass kevin smith is the type of kid who's going to put tom davis up in the hole because he does so many good things that he turns around and then he takes that quick shot there was no need to take that quick shot. Let it come out of the offense. The two starting guards return for Iowa, Troy Skinner and James Moses. And uh, right now, Tom Davis is talking to Kevin Smith, saying you are going to put me in. <laughs> Moses working against McCaffrey. James Moses, the second leading scorer for the Hawkeyes. Now with six, they have balanced scoring with Rodell Davis, leading them with nine. There it is, over the top, against the trap. Davis to Grand Hill, and Duke has had those numbers advantage all day. Yeah, I would expect 
at halftime or even before at the next timeout, Tom Davis to make an adjustment with that trap, not allowing Duke to throw it over the top. Iowa's never had the lead in this game. Duke was up by as much as 10. It's fluctuated between four and six in the last eight minutes or so. AC Earl with two fouls, knocked away by Leighton. Thomas Hill is going to come back into the game, replacing Bill McCaffrey for Duke. Hill has nine points. I think one of the things that when you come to the tournament coaching-wise, you have to be ready to make adjustments because you're playing against teams in many cases you haven't seen all year. You watch them a couple of times on film, and you have to do that. A.C. Earl tried a lob pass that was well short. 11 turnovers committed by Iowa. Iowa was fortunate to be in the game committing 11 turnovers. Brian Davis gives Duke a 35 to 28 lead. Duke, of course, familiar with the final four. They've been there three straight years and four out of the last five. And Iowa, with a 12 and 16 record a year ago, they weren't even in this thing. They've got a good future. For 50 years, One Life Insurance Company has ranked first in dividend performance more times than any other. Not everyone has heard of us. Some people have. Northwestern Mutual Life. Because there are races that last 24 hours, because there are rallies that last four days, there are high-performance tires called Michelin's. There are things in this life we can all count on. Qualities that we have come to know and trust. Pride, good friends, and simple, honest values. These are the things we know we can depend on. Chevrolet, the cars more Americans depend on. Playing basketball is hard on your body, but it's really tough on your feet. The pump, where were you when I needed you? If I could play today, I'd pump up for support, protection, and a custom fit. Hey, it's time to move to a new neighborhood. Pump up and air out. Switch to the greatest sports performance shoe in the world, the Reebok Pump. Pump up and air out. She's a 69-year-old grandmother on a crusade. Rights for senior citizens? No way. She wants to legalize marijuana. Her story on the CBS Evening News. Back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Duke leading 35 to 28. They bring in Crawford Palmer, 6'9", junior from Arlington. Christian Laker goes out, and not a big team in there for Iowa as A.C. Earl is out right now. Rodell Davis tries inside. One shot is blocked. Now Duke coming back. Hurley beats Thomas Hill. No basket. And traveling call before the layup. Ho, oh, ho. Oh. That was awfully close. You now, what about the lineup that is in there now for Iowa with A.C. Earl out of there? Well, with Leitner on the bench, it's not that, and Palmer in the game, he doesn't bring, the, obviously, the same impact to this Duke ball club. So they, they, they can expect to get their offense from other areas, but they're still quick out there defensively. Duke is shooting 35% in the first 12 minutes of the game, but lately they've been red hot with six of nine. Skinner guarded by Hurley. And a five second violation as Hurley hung in there with Skinner and another turnover, and that will be the 12th against the Hawkeyes as Leitner checks back in for Duke. You know, many people would say, oh, Troy Skinner, look at what he did. He the five second call. Well, that was his teammates fault. No one came to help him. Everyone stood there watching him. Someone's got to go back door, set a screen, do something to free themselves up. Duke getting the ball to midcourt on one pass, and Brian Davis slams it home. 
It'll be tough for Iowa as long as Duke can lob that pass over to midcourt. What they're going to have to do is force Duke to throw the ball in front of the defensive man, and then they can go trap, not allowing that open court fast breaking situation. And a palming, is that a palming violation? Offensive foul. Coming up next, right here, it'll be Xavier of Cincinnati against the University of Connecticut, who defeated Shaquille O'Neal and LSU in the first round, and Florida State against Bob Knight's Indiana's team. Duke is on a six to nothing run right now, and AC Earl has come back in the game for Iowa. Al Barnes also checks back in. See Duke spreading the, the defense as much as they can. Three big people on the baseline. Leitner surrounded by Hawkeyes, and he gets hit. If it's on Earl, it'll be three, so this will be a big call. It was on Moses. And for Moses, it is his third personal foul, but better Moses than Earl. Sorry. Mr. Yep. Mrs. Moses. And, and right now, with two minutes to go, the big concern Tom Davis has got to be concerned with getting his team into their set offense and doing a better job containing when they go to their full court trap. Because Duke is just killing them on that. Uh, they must. Uh, they've only turned the ball once over one time on that in that situation. Moses goes out with his three personal fouls, and Rodell Davis who's been the leading scorer for Iowa with nine points, came in. Let's go, Let's go Duke. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Let's go, baby. Leitner with 12. Crawford Palmer will give Leitner another breather. He goes out with 12 points. Blue Devils have run off eight straight points against the Hawkeyes. And now have their biggest lead of the game, 39 to 28, with two minutes remaining in the first half. Smith, the freshman, back in the point guard for Iowa, number 10. Val Barnes, nowhere to go. Well, the intensity is picked up again for Duke at the defensive end of the court. Grand Hill, it's still Iowa's ball. They're going to have to spread the court more and make the entry passes if they're overplayed, go back door, become a little more active. They're standing and watching Iowa at the offensive end of the court. Shot clock is under 10. Smith against Hurley, and they're going to call Hurley with a reach in foul. That'll be his second. And for Duke, their 19 foul. And one and one on the line for Iowa. And Bill McCaffrey will check back in along with Christian Leitner. Looks like Mike Krzyzewski is substituting in the manner that Tom Davis does, with guys coming in and out more rapidly than he normally does. I think there's a little offense-defense here with Palmer coming in and out. You're right, though, but moving the players, checking their fatigue, and making sure they're as fresh as they possibly can be for the second half. Kevin Smith comes into the game as a 41% free throw shooter, makes the first one. He's facing another backcourt man from the Metroplex area in Dallas-Fort Worth. Kevin Smith is from Fort Worth, and Thomas Hill of Duke is from Lancaster. One out of two for Smith. Now the ball handling and responsibility for Duke falls on Grant Hill's shoulder. He's, he's the backup point guard. Thomas Hill. Street. Gets position for the rebound. Iowa trailing by 10. Smith misses a three into the hands of Rodell Davis. Off his own foot and a three on two break. Grand Hill lays it up. The basket counts and he gets fouled. What a terrific performer. You talked about ball handling. He was their leading rebounder in the last six games coming into this one. Among other things he does. He, he just does everything for this team. And the thing that impresses you about 
the players on Duke is how strong they go to the basket and finish off the plays. Now here's a nice move to the basket, protecting the basketball as it goes in, not allowing the defensive man to reach in and slap it away. You know, everyone knows, of course, by now that Calvin Hill, the great football player, is Grant's dad, but Hill was asked about what kind of influence his dad has had. He says, well, during the year, he says, he kind of let me do things my own way. The big influence he had was in the recruiting process. And his dad knows he's been through that himself, making that decision to go to Yale. Calvin Hill now working in the Baltimore Orioles front office. Under a minute to play in the first half. Crawford Palmer in for defensive purposes, he pointed out. 42 to 29, biggest lead of the game right now for Duke, and another turnover. 15 in this first half by the young seniorless Iowa Hawkeyes, and Christian Leitner is in for Palmer. And again, they're going to have the biggest problem right now is what they're doing offensively. You must have opportunities shooting the basketball, and Iowa is just killing themselves. Of course, Duke's defense has been tenacious. McCaffrey dribbles it off his foot. Rodell Davis with Grand Hill defending, and an offensive foul. Grand Hill got positioned beautifully against Davis. But the beauty is there's a turnover, and then how quickly he got back defensively, converting from offense to defense, getting that position. That's not easy to stand there and take a shot right to the jaw. There he is, moving his feet. Look at his foot movement. Establishes that position. Davis goes out of the game. Hurley checks back for Duke. Webb replaced Davis. With 33.2 seconds, the shot clock is off. Right there we saw Iowa, what they did defensively, they didn't allow Lakeman to throw the ball over the top. They looked to force him to throw it in front of the defensive man and then trap. Now Duke, they'll just use the remainder of the, of the clock, only 10 seconds left in the half. But Duke, they have to just come out and play the same way, the same intensity as they did the first half. Iowa has to make the adjustments. Kubek gets his own rebound after missing the three and lays it in as the first half comes to an end. And the Duke Blue Devils jump and run to their dressing room with a very impressive first half. And that is the end of the first half with the score, Duke 44 and Iowa 29. And CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship We'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. The greatest sports performance you in the world. The Reebok Pump, Pump Up and Air Out. And by Pizza Hut and their new MVP for topping pizza. Here's bullish news from Mazda. Now is the time to invest in a 626, the sedan with the best basic warranty in its class. Get a 626 LX now and get big savings on a package of our most popular options. Plus, get $1,500 cash back from Mazda. Total savings, $2,320. It's Mazda's best deal ever, but it won't last forever. Right time, right car, right deal. Save $2,320 on a Mazda 626 LX now. During the final four, call on Pizza Hut for the new MVP pizza. Loaded with pepperoni, mushrooms, Italian sausage, and green peppers. Get one for $7.99 and a second for just $4 more. Dollar to deliver, gonna change the food. Ready for some good news? If your car is in an accident and you have Allstate insurance, you can leave it in our hands. Allstate's recommended pro shops can do everything, including the estimate, in one stop. And to make you feel even better, Allstate will guarantee their workmanship for as long as you own your car. Well, that's the news. Now, be careful. You're in good hands with Allstate, a member of the Sears Financial Network. On land, at sea, and in the air, they're keeping Miami nice. This is awesome! Making a big splash in Police Academy 5 tonight. 
If she pleads guilty to a driving offense, she's admitting it's her car, and we can connect her to the jewelry. And the murder. Suppose we go to court on this. And Turnovers. And right now, they've got 16 fast break points. That's because, as Bill mentioned moments ago, Iowa has been unable to stop Duke's long passes against the full court press. And Duke holding an 18 to 10 rebounding lead. Rodell Davis, the leading scorer for Iowa. Christian Leitner has 12. Grant Hill, 11. And Thomas Hill with nine for the Blue Devils. Start the second half. Grant Hill, Greg Kubek, and Christian Leitner up front. Thomas Hill and Bobby Hurley in the backcourt for the white-shirted Blue Devils. And immediately inside and the basket by Thomas Hill, who now with 11. Three Duke Blue Devils in double figures. But Bobby Hurley is so smart in those areas because he knew who to give the ball to. The man that can finish it off, and that's Tom Hill. And he'll have an offensive foul called against Street of Iowa. He starts with Winters. A.C. Earl now in the game. Moses and Rodell Davis. The Duke Blue Devils lead the Iowa Hawkeyes 46 to 29 in the second round matchup. Duke trying to get to the regional semifinals at Pontiac, Michigan. And the Blue Devils are now on a 17 to 1 run after Iowa came within three almost midway through the first half. Well, they came out of the locker room like they started the ball game with the intensity defensively. They created a couple turnovers. And they've converted, and Hurley has made the right decisions every time with the ball. Big game for Hurley to try to make those decisions against the Iowa zone, and he's done a perfect job that way thus far. Taking a look here at this bracket in Minneapolis, the winner of this Iowa Duke class will take on the survivor of UConn and Xavier later, and the winner, two winners, will move on to Pontiac and the regional semifinals next week. A.C. Earl, the leading scorer for the Hawkeyes. He doesn't start, but he comes off the bench, has six points right now. Well, the Rodell Davis leads with nine. Duke Brown, by the way, was on Christian Leitner. Iowa's got to solve some problems if they're going to get back in this game. Let's see something right now. Earl makes this foul shot. Have they solved the problem with their full court trap? Will they allow Duke to throw it over the top? They do. It's a three on two break. Kubek steadies, goes for three and hits. And great Kubek with his first three point basket of the game. And he's the best three point shooter of Duke, shooting 44% from the field. Rodell Davis baseline. He's got 11 to lead the Hawkeyes. There's the law pass. Skinner was back there. No harm, no foul, but Grand Hill beats Thomas Hill, and they've got to do something because Duke is getting three-on-one and two-on-one layups throughout this game. And, and, and every time, Thomas Hill finishing it off at the other end. 13 for Thomas Hill. James Moses in the lane, and it drops for him. Well, one thing we're seeing is now, now uh, Iowa is picking up full court after made field goals. The first half, it was just foul shots. Thomas Hill loses the ball to Moses, and one of the rare Iowa fast breaks. Moses hits the jumper. He's got 10 points in the game. Up tempo it is, and it's 53 to 37. Duke still in control. Now, this is the area of the game Iowa has done a good job. They have stopped Duke. The only spot they were hurting was on the offensive class, but they've done a good job on the inside defense. Christian Leitner with 14 points. Leitner led the Blue Devils with 22 in their opening round game against double-teaming Northeast Louisiana. Trying to feed Earl, trying to go to Skinner, and it was deflected off of Hurley. And there's that aggressive defense by Duke, denying the passes. You know, one, a few times in the first half, they got burned with backdoor layups. But those are things you're going to have to give up if you're really going to be an aggressive defense and step out and play the passing lanes. James Winters, very active 6'5 freshman from Joliet and Val Barnes, a 6'2 sophomore guard. Both now in for Tom Davis. Moses. Rebound, A.C. Earl. And Duke was not about to challenge that and pick up a point. Yeah, Leighton was smart. He knew he was beaten. He let Earl get the two. 
Well, with nine points. Iowa is looking to press half court now. Have to find something to get to get back into the game. Great passing from Hurley into the paint to Lindner and Thomas Hill, who's been the beneficiary to the tune of 15 so far. Winters down the middle. Kick ball, and we'll have a Duke foul against Thomas Hill, and that will be Thomas Hill's third personal foul. Duke has yet to miss from the field, Bill, here in the second half. They are six for six. Four of them were, were layups. The others were two jump shots by Cooper. Winters in the lane. Grand Hill gets the rebound. Seven rebounds by Grand Hill and a steal by Iowa. Moses with the jumper. He's hit a few, but Iowa's got to be patient when they get the ball. Yeah, I, I like Moses. He has the ability to hit the standstill jump shot, put it on the floor, take the dribble, hit the jump shot, or take it all the way to the basket. Moses is six for seven from the field, but here's Grand Hill from Hurley. Blocked out of bounds, and it's going to be Iowa's ball. And limping is James Winters. James Winters comes up limping for Street will come into the game for Iowa. And Rodell Davis, as well as Kevin Smith. Tom Davis with his wholesale substitution. What Tom Davis decide to do to start the second half, he's going after Duke. He's not gonna allow his team to just play the zone. They're gonna attack. Speaking of attack, A.C. Earl with the basket. Called against the Iowa bench for a delay of game. A.C. Earl has now scored 11 points. Bill McCaffrey has come into the game for Duke, replacing Thomas Hill, went out with three fouls. I would think some of the Iowa players would lead that pass and almost bait Leitner into throwing it, looking for the steal, but they haven't been able to do it. Leitner has made the right choices with that pass. Here's Leitner, turn around on the baseline. My move. Get rid of the car. Yeah, yeah. Kicked out of bounds, and another turnover. Gives it back to the Duke Blue Devils. 18 turnovers, and that's more than Iowa averaged for a game the entire year. Timeout, we'll be back. Because nature gives us driving challenges at all the wrong moments, Mercedes-Benz gives us ASR, automatic slip control. It doesn't overcome nature, but it makes it easier to live with. You nervous? H-E-L-P, Mom. No. Monday. A couple of high seeds, Xavier and Connecticut will battle in second round coverage coming up. Florida State against Indiana. And Florida State, did, they were down 20 points to Louisville in the second half of the finals of the Metro uh, uh, tournament and were able to come back and win that tournament. Now they got Indiana to deal with. McCaffrey hits the jumper after the first few minutes of this game, there's a three by Moses of Iowa. After the first few minutes, Iowa, Duke has been red hot from the field, but Moses also has been a big factor early in the second half. 61 to 46, the Blue Devils in front. So far, the key has been Christian Lakeman's ability to find the open man down the court and hit him against the trap. Been a shooting bonanza so far in the second half. 18 shots taken, only two missed. Curly, Kubek gets the offensive rebound, and no basket if it goes traveling. Greg Kubek walks. Bob Hurley has played an excellent floor game. 
Defensively, he starts the defense right there at the guard position, and it carries through to the team. He's made the right decisions with the ball, but he has not scored a point today. And I just wonder how far the Blue Devils can go with him not shooting well. Inside is Moses, who's been very hot this half. Rebound by A.C. Earl, has it slapped away by McCaffrey, and it's still Iowa ball. Good point. He scored only five points in the first round game against kind of a relatively weak opponent, Northeast Louisiana, and is 0 for 5. But he has eight assists, so he's distributing the ball. Oh, yeah, he's doing everything well, but shoot the basketball. On the interception, Grand Hill, and Barnes very smartly does not challenge him. 13 points and six steals for Grand Hill. Smith, no basket, foul before the shot. No basket. Troy Skinner checking into the game. Mike Krzyzewski telling us yesterday about Hurley and about next year. He won't have to worry about Anderson of Georgia Tech, Porciani, and a lot of those big guards and point guards in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And, been compared to and karate at Virginia, so every game that he, he played this year in the conference, he was playing against someone with a reputation in that position. Here's another turnover, and McCaffrey converts. Well, we, what we are, are watching right now is a clinic how to overplay, deny, keep the intensity defensively, and create your offense from the defensive end of the court. Earl finds Chris Street. Basket, good and a foul. Grant Hill. Let's get there, guys. His second personal foul. Bobby Hurley on that previous foul for Duke picked it up. It was his third foul. So Hurley has three remained in the game. Missing the free throw was Street. Now Duke leading 65 to 48. Iowa has never had the lead in this one. And I wonder how long they can stay in this zone, packing it in, because Duke will really use the 45-second clock to get that shot. They need the ball back. Now Duke would like to get the ball inside to Laker. That's their first objective. He's got it. They surround him. Brian Davis. Here's Grant Hill. With a rebound. It, it, it's a shame in one way for Iowa because the, the game plan to force Duke to shoot from the perimeter is exactly what you want them to do, to prove it. But they haven't been able to do the job handling the basketball against the defense of the Duke Blue Devils. The Hawkeyes commit their second team foul. Thomas Hill coming back for Duke. And for Iowa, Rodell Davis, and Kevin Smith, and James Winters. Winners had hobbled off earlier, and uh, he seems to be all right. Personal foul was on Chris Street, and now they're going to call Davis for the foul. That'll be his third personal. And the third team foul. Less than seven minutes have gone by in the second half. The Duke Blue Devils. They're looking for another trip to the Final Four. Won't do it from the East region as they have the last three years out of East Rutherford, but Pontiac could be just as good if they're playing as well, and they have really had a terrific season this year. Everyone coming back but Greg Kubek and reserve Clay Buckley next season for Coach K. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. We're seeing Duke just use the clock. Iowa cannot allow them to do this. They're down. But 18 points, they have to go out and challenge this Duke team, force them into some turnovers instead of letting them use 35, 40 seconds of the 45-second clock. Well, they switched to the man-to-man, -man, and it's still going to be Duke's ball with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Biggest lead for Duke was 20 points. And a whistle stepping on the line for the Blue Devils and Iowa will maintain possession. Mike Krzyzewski, who has, by the way, the highest winning percentage in an NCAA tournament of all active coaches. Percentage now, not number of wins. Nothing like good players. <laughs> 
Skinner hits a three. He was four for four in the round one against East Tennessee State. In the East Tennessee State game, this lineup helped turn the things around when he used the two point guards, Smith and Skinner, in there together because Skinner can shoot that three. Leitner drives in. The basket will go for Christian Leitner, who has 18 points and a chance for another. I don't know about this play. It looked like Christian Leitner got fouled right there, takes another step, goes through the basket. I would have to say that's uh, that reminds me more of an NBA move, a continuation. Right. They don't call it that way in college ball, but Leitner got the break, and A.C. Earl is called for his third personal foul. Leitner. Scoring leader, and I guess now the emotional leader of this team. He is. That uh, Mike Shishevsky said that his concern, obviously, was the was the um, mental fatigue of his ball club, and he felt that Christian Leitner was the one that would come out and give them the emotional lift that they would need. Van Hill has a big height advantage on Smith. They're looking for AC Earl, and they're going to get Leitner on it. And that'll be three on Leitner. And here's Earl and Leitner. Just trying, Earl trying to get the position. Leitner trying to push him out off the court. 68 to 51. Duke is in front and we'll take a timeout here at the Metrodome. Who guarantees overnight air delivery before 1030 to the most places across the country? you think? Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships, calls this timeout to tell you about the other game in town. The Oldsmobile drive to the Final Four Cellophon. At your Olds dealer, you can get a great deal on every new 1991 Oldsmobile. In addition to the terrific values, you'll also have a shot at winning hundreds of prizes like a new Cutlass Supreme or a large screen TV. Hey, with deals like this, you can't miss. If you have an insurance repair on your home and you have Allstate, it's in our hands. We know some very reliable contractors. It's our business too. So if you choose a contractor we recommend, we guarantee the workmanship of their repairs for one year. That's why you're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Who guarantees overnight air delivery before 10.30 to the most people coast to coast? Who did you think? He's on the run from outlaws who killed his family. But is a mysterious drifter his only hope? Rick Schroeder and Wilfred Brimley, Blood River, Sunday. Looking at the West region in Salt Lake City, Arizona, has survived over Brigham Young. Creighton and Seton Hall battling right now. Kevin Smith missed the three from the corner, and here's Davis feeding McCaffrey. Pulls up over Skinner, and it's 70-51. to 19-point lead for the Blue Devils. Skinner going for another three, short this time. Battle out of bounds, and it's still Iowa's ball. Hawkeyes began the season 11 and 1, pretty impressive, but then they got into the conference and finished 9 and 9. But they had the big wins against Indiana and Ohio State, and whatever they do here has got to be a great impetus going into next year with an all underclass team, basically. It's all part of the learning experience. There's Pete Gillen. Well, he's, he's observing this game, hoping that he's going to be playing one of these two teams. And right now, you'd have to say he's watching Duke very closely. Xavier against Connecticut in the second half of our doubleheader here at the Metrodome. Val Barnes will replace Troy Skinner in the Iowa lineup. Your hands up. Now 
Now Duke is backing it in in the zone. They're in a 2-3 zone. There's the alley-oop pass. A.C. Earl from Val Barnes. Earl has 13. Moses is the high scorer for Iowa with 50. But Duke continues to connect on the half-court pass against the full-court press. I, I don't know how many teams would take their center and ask him to be the one to make that pass. Most cases, you, you would see a team, a small forward, or you'd have one of your guards taking the basketball out. But th that's quite a responsibility that Mike Krzyzewski has put on uh, Christian Leighton's shoulders. Tom Davis shaking his head over that call, the foul on Kevin Smith, and that's the fifth team foul against Iowa. Duke has already committed six, one more, and of course it'll be the bonus for the Hawkeyes. Big Ten against ACC. They've been both very successful so far in this tournament, these conferences. Leitner threw it away into the hands of Kevin Smith. Duke has gotten back. Rodell Davis over some big people. And Brian Davis comes out with it. Follow-up is missed by Thomas Hill. Taya Duke is getting back, though, defensively. Getting back with just any loose ball the Blue Devils have picked up today. Winters. That's James Winters with his first basket. Now here's the full court trap. This time he wasn't able to throw it over the top, so he just finds Grand Hill. 70 to 55. Duke with under 10 minutes to play in the second half. Winner goes on to face. The survivor of the Connecticut Xavier game coming up next. If Duke wins this game, they're on their way to Pontiac in the regional semifinals next week. Iowa's got to come out and put a little more pressure than they're putting on now because they're just going to allow Duke to use that clock. And they'll run it down inside 10. Now they'll give it to Grand Hill and let him go one-on-one, one one, either making, taking the shot or looking for someone for the open jump shot. Six on the shot clock, McCaffrey. This is Thomas Hill inside, batted away by A.C. Earl. Now Iowa down by 15, trying to make a run here in the second half. Come back against an experienced team. Barnes in the lane. 70 to 57, Duke. This is about the point in the game against East Tennessee State where that trap started taking effect. A little fatigue set in, and they were able to convert to some easy baskets. As a matter of fact, that's the only way they were able to beat East Tennessee State was to force the turnovers. Iowa has run off six in a row. One big question you always have when you're sitting over there as the coach. Did you stop playing basketball and take your team out of a rhythm when you try to use the clock? Ed Jucker of Cincinnati in 63 did that. That was before the shot clock and lost to Loyola of Chicago in the championship game by doing just that. I don't remember that. I was around eight years old then and we didn't have a TV. Yeah, we're the same age. Let's face it. McCaffrey. McCaffrey misses. And a foul called against Duke. And the Iowa fans here love it. A lot of them here at the Metrodome. We're at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, the second round of the Midwest region. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham on Duke, leading Iowa 70 to 57, and Christian Leitner goes out, having picked up his fourth personal foul. And a sea of black and gold in the stands here in another Big Ten city for these Iowa fans. Right now on the court, the biggest player for Duke is Grand Hill at 6'7". So, so Mike Krzyzewski has decided to go with a very small, quick lineup. Now, does this hurt them on the boards? A.C. Earl missed the front end of the one and one. The one thing, this all started this turnaround for Iowa with their aggressiveness tracking and coming out, but also Hurley was sitting on the bench. He's back. And he's playing with three fouls. Such a delicate thing from a coaching standpoint. When do you tell your team to just use the clock? And do you take them out of that rhythm? Val Barnes with a reach in foul, and that will be the 16th foul against Iowa. So no bonus yet for Duke. Second on Barnes, and there's Big J Webb, 6'8 sophomore, coming in and giving AC Earl a breather. Earl 
goes out with 13 points, six rebounds, and it's blocked four. The women's final four in two weeks. In financial matters, as in life, everybody's different. Different needs, different goals. The Principal Financial Group understands our financial services are as unique and individual as you are. Personalized solutions that offer each customer an advantage. That's the Principal Edge. It's made us one of America's largest. So for diversified products that fit your financial needs to the letter, look for the Principal Edge. When it came to redefining the word luxury, it wasn't a Webster. It was Oldsmobile. The 98 defines luxury in terms of how much you get, not how much you spend. Anti-lock brakes, fuel-efficient power, computerized suspension, technology found in cars costing thousands more. And you can always take a Webster at his word. This is the new, the new 98. Luxury redefined. Generation bubbles. Great values, big prizes during Oldsmobile's drive to the Final Four Celathon. You can't miss. During the Final Four, satisfy everyone with the new Pizza Hut MVP pizza with four of your favorite toppings. Pepperoni, Italian sausage, mushrooms, and green peppers. Get one for $7.99 and a second for just $4 more in delivery and carry out only. Pizza Hut, make it great. This is how easy it is to collate a mailing on an IBM laser printer. And how easy is it to collate with our major competitor? Probably now isn't the best time to ask. IBM laser printers. Suddenly, nothing else measures up. Seven forty-eight to go in the second half, and Iowa has outscored Duke six to nothing. But inside, Thomas Hill gets fouled and will shoot two. Interesting what Duke did then, wasn't it? Because they've been using the forty-five second clock, take the ball side out, and they attack. And of course, the guy going to the line, Thomas Hill. Something always good happens when he's going to the basket with the ball. Jay Webb committing the foul, and Thomas Hill, who Coach Krzyzewski told us yesterday, we didn't expect him to play at the level he did this year. Just a sophomore. Now, at the other end of the court, now Duke with this small lineup, how do they approach it? Do they go to his own? Do they pick up man-to-man? -man because they have a, there's a distinct size advantage on the inside. So that's a decision that Mike Krzyzewski has. Now, with the small lineup, at the other end, offensively, I would think that when the clock is running down, if he's going to do that, to get the ball to one of the smaller players, whoever Webb is playing. Troy Skinner back in at point guard. AC Earl is on the bench right now, but they have Chris Street and Jay Webb, both 6'8". Those are the biggest players on the court for Iowa. Right, and have one of the smaller players take them out on the court and look to drive to the basket and use their quickness. Moses fires it up. He's having an outstanding game with 17 points for James Moses. He has hit 8 of 10 from the field, and it's 71-59. It's a 12-point affair now. Moses is some offensive talent. He has shown us everything you would like to see from an offensive player. He got the tip in to beat Indiana in the big road win for the Hawkeyes this year, late in the season. Now, here's the problem. Davis Webb. Webb cannot go out and play him because he's just not quick enough. And I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski has told Davis, listen, if you get the opportunity to beat him on the, on the, on the to go into the basket, take it. Shot clock. Hurley over Skinner. And he had Skinner in his face. Big shot by Hurley, and that's his first basket of the game. Two points for Bobby Hurley. He's probably around 10 pounds lighter with that relieving that pressure, hitting that jumper. And it's out of bounds. Iowa ball. It was last touched by Kubek, who was shaken up momentarily. Grant Hill and Antonio Lang. They're both roommates, by the way. The two freshman forwards come in. And Thomas Hill goes out of the game. He has scored 16 points. Also, Kevin Smith. A.C. Earl back in, misses inside, and a big possession for Iowa because the Hawkeyes have been making a run against Duke here. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham here in Minneapolis. They've been doing the job defensively, handling the ball, not turning it over as they did for most of this ballgame. 
Duke has led by as much as 20. They're up by 14 right now with just under six minutes to play. In the last four minutes, Duke is using the 45-second clock, winding it down inside of 10. And that's when Iowa was able to make that run. And the question still is out, is this the right decision? Because now it takes Duke out of their flow offensively. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Hurley has it knocked away from behind, out of bounds. And it is still Duke's ball with seven seconds on the shot clock. Iowa has turned it over 20 times. It's three more than their season's average. Duke has owned the board. Duke's shooting has improved tremendously. It was well into the 40s. And Christian Leitner has four personal fouls and on the bench with 19. There's James Winters replacing Chris Street for Iowa. Well, from the good side for Iowa, though, they've only turned the ball over a couple times the last, uh, say, 14, well, 12, 13 minutes of this ball game. A.C. Earl has now picked up his fourth foul as Antonio Lang will go to the line to shoot two here in Minneapolis. The winner of this game between Duke and Iowa. Duke, the second seed, will face the winner of the next game coming up between the University of Connecticut and Xavier. Course, both winners here today will move on to Pontiac in the regional semifinals next week. Lang has been playing good basketball the last couple of weeks. And, and the reason for that is because he's been able to regain his confidence. He was just so down on himself as a basketball player, and his roommate helped him through that. It was uh, Grant Hill. Smith nearly turned it over. Barnes fires for three. A.C. Earl trying to keep control. Iowa still has it. Knocked away by McCaffrey in a fine defensive play against Val Barnes. That was a good decision by McCaffrey. He could have made a pass to Hill, but what they want to do is shorten this game, use up as much of that 45-second clock as they possibly can. Iowa forced to play a trapping defense, man-to-man. -man. Can't allow Duke to use the clock. Normally, Iowa's been in the zone. What the Duke will do when it gets to 10 is look to give it to Grand Hill. Well, we've decided to go with 11. <laughs> Hill is fouled and will go to the line to shoot one and one. The foul is against Winters. So the winner here and the survivor of UConn and Xavier will tangle at Pontiac later in the week. Friday to be exact in the regional semifinals in the Midwest. One thing that stands out about the whole tournament is how many young teams there are out there. We're just looking at two teams out here now, which very easily could be competing again next year. Same faces you're seeing now to be in that Final Four. No seniors on Iowa's team. Greg Kubek is the only senior starter for Duke, and Clay Buckley the only other senior. Troy Skinner. And James Moses have come in. Street picked up his third. And Grant Hill, what a strong all-round game with 14 points. Look at those numbers, <laughs> including the steals. Huh? He had been the leading rebounder for Duke in the last six games coming in, and now they're going to call Lang. A little over anxious with Street. Yeah, the, Mike Krzyzewski wouldn't be upset with that because there's somebody going aggressively to the offensive boards. That's what you like to see, especially out of a young player. You made a good point about Iowa. You may see them back next year. Here's a club that was 12 and 16 last year, not in the tournament, not expected to do much. So this is a good launching pad for them. Brian Davis goes out. The Duke Blue Devils are up 675 to 60 with 439 to play. Christian Leitner has just come back in the game for Duke playing with four personal fouls. Chris Street makes one free throw. And Duke trying to use the clock and move on to the regional semifinals. Well, from the opening tip, Duke has controlled this game, and they did that in the fashion with their defense intensity at the, 
creating turnovers, leading to easy baskets because they have not shot the ball very well today. Believe it or not, leading by, what, 15 points. They were shaky early. They've come on in the second half to be respectable in the shooting department. But they've handled Iowa's full court press with ease. But you know what I'm saying? They have had some layups, but we haven't seen a Duke team that has shown us that they can shoot the ball from the perimeter. And that's something they're gonna have to do as they move along. Christian Leitner, as the clock runs down to one second, rebound by Street. And you're right, Bobby Hurley, only two points today. You gotta have more offense for the home throw. One three-pointer, and that comes from Kubek. AC Earl. This is inside. Rebound, Val Barnes. 75 to 60, a 15-point game. Earl hits from outside, but this one is starting to become a factor. You know, one thing you love about Iowa, they came out sluggish. Tom Davis called it a timeout, and they came out with intensity, and they've played hard. Now, they've turned the ball over, but those are things you could correct. If you don't play hard, that's a tough thing to correct. No matter where you look, there's Mazda. We're introducing new products like the Miata, setting new sales records, winning the respect of the automotive press, and winning awards for both quality and customer satisfaction. But most important, we're making thousands of people feel just right. Just feels right. is a faster, easier way to rent a car. Number one, Club Gold. No paperwork, no stopping in counters, nothing to slow you down. Hurts, we're America's wheels. You go straight to our gold parking area, where your car is waiting, ready to go. I'm gonna make it. Hurts, it's the fastest way to rent a car. Is the Washington Monument on shaky ground? Pressure in the same manner all the time? With the long pass, McCaffrey. We'll try it over AC Earl for sure. No need to. I was going to have to make a decision. Either they're going to have to start obviously looking for the steal, but do they start taking those fouls? There's a foul there, and that is the 10th team foul. It'll be two shots for the Duke Blue Devils. Troy Skinner and McCaffrey is on the line. Best free throw shooter for Duke on the stripe right now at 86%. Iowa have never led in this game, and Duke was up by as much as 20. Iowa cut it to 12. That's as close as they came. Street and Barnes back in the lineup for Iowa. Leading scorer. Big game for James Moses today with 17. AC Earl with 15. And Rodell Davis 11. Are the double figure scorers for Iowa. Leitner with 19. Thomas Hill with 16 of the top scorers for the Blue Devils. Now Duke is in a 2-3 zone. Just putting a little pressure on the ball, making it tough for the three. James Moses misses the three, rebound by Bobby Hurley. And he's fouled by Street. Duke has been so quick to the basketball today. Long rebounds, their guards being able to chase it down. Balls on the floor, there they are picking them up, converting them into easy baskets. Four fouls on Street. AC Earl also in there with four. Two guys. Final in women's action in the NCAA play. Bobby Hurley on the line. He has scored only two points today. Came in the game averaging over 11. Scored five in the opening round victory over Northeast Louisiana. 
His flow game has been excellent. For the season, he averages over five turnovers a game. Today, he's just done an excellent job handling the ball and making the right decisions. Kevin Smith goes inside with the big boys and misses the rebound by Leitner. Duke has gone to advance into the regional semifinals. They lost to North Carolina in the Atlanta Coast Conference Tourney Final and look like they're back playing the kind of ball that they played in the latter stages of this season. And an Iowa foul against James Moses. That's his fourth. Here's Tom Davis. Of course, everyone calls him Dr. Tom Davis, and no one really has found out, well, what is he a doctorate of? Well, Bill, you're going to be interesting to know that he has his dissertation on the physical endeavors of colonial Americans. In other words, Ben Franklin used to jog. Could, could, could I get a copy of that? Yeah. Send it to your home. You know, it's one of those just send 50 cents. <laughs> And a self-addressed stamped envelope. They talk about, you know, they would say Dr. Tom Davis. You're in the back with me and Tom. As if that's his first name. Thomas Hill misses the free throw. One shot. One that time. If Mike Krzyzewski was to pick an MVP for these first two games in the tournament, I think he'd point right at Tom, Thomas Hill for the way he has performed for this team. Well, he scored 18 points in the opening round victory. He's got 17 now. So he's on a high. Moses tries to get it into AC Earl out of bounds, and he'll turn it back over to Duke. And that was Thomas Hill again, knocking it loose, forcing the turnover. But from Iowa's team, has got to take something positive out of this experience. Now they understand and know what it's going to take for them when they get back into this situation, how they're going to have to respond mentally, how they're going to have to prepare for the game, and what they're going to have to do physically on the court. Marty Clark, the freshman guard, is into the game. He's out of Westchester, Illinois, getting a chance to play in the second round of the tournament with the time running down. Early, deflected out of bounds. Clay Buckley now comes in for the Duke Blue Devils and, and a bunch of substitutions. Christian Leitner goes out of the game. He scored 19 points today and had four rebounds. And leads Duke for the second straight game in the tournament. You made a point earlier in the game. Dick, when you mentioned about the goals of the different teams in Iowa, you know, coming back from and making this tournament with, with two weeks left in the regular season, they weren't sure if they would get here, but to win their first game, their goals will change for next year. They will not be happy if they just get to the final 32. Christian Ast, a freshman from Heidelberg, Germany, has checked in. Thomas Hill goes out with 17 and still to come. More second round action in this NCAA tournament. Xavier, Pete Gillen against Jim Calhoun in Connecticut. That should be a scrappy, tough, hard-nosed game. And, and it'll be a game where the inside play will, will determine the winner. Brian Davis will come in for Bobby Hurley, who goes out. Hurley in the two games here in Minneapolis. At 16 assists and only three turnovers, that's a marvelous ratio. That is the most important thing he's got to do for his team. Find the people, get the people going offensively on the court. He did an excellent job today getting the ball to Leitner early in the ball game and getting him involved. Duke will move on, the Blue Devils. Talk about goals. Their goal is to win a national championship. They've been to the Final Four four times in the last five years. Marty Clark misses both free throws. 17 point lead for Duke. They've led all the way. Skinner is off the mark. Rebound Brian Davis. And he will shoot two. For Iowa, they'll finish at 21 and 11. Thank you. 
They had a lot of close Davis. games this year, won a lot of close ones, and this was not one of them today. They should have their heads up and proud of what they've accomplished. Tom Davis should be ecstatic with the type of effort he got from his kids today. Because all it's going to do is get better for them in Iowa. Talked about people saying what kind of material he's had. You know, he's had some really fine athletes who have gone on to play on, professional guys. ball and distinguish themselves. John Bagley and Michael Adams from Boston College. How about Kevin Gamble, who was here? Brad Lowhouse and some others. P.J. So, Armstrong. And Jepson, one of the things that always has impressed me about Tom Davis is his ability to work with big people. You know, you look at uh, Lowhouse, who's now in the pros, and you look at Jepson, who was drafted. Jepson, his junior year, could barely walk and talk, and then all of a sudden he emerged into being a, a, a very fine basketball player his senior year and was drafted by the Golden State Warriors. And, uh, you know, A.C. Earl, I can see the same development coming with him as from the, when he was a freshman. 81-62 lead and a three-point basket Ooh. off the glass by James Moses, who has 20 points. Nine more than a season's average. He's had an outstanding game in defeat for Iowa today. Asked. And Davis walks with 56 seconds to go. Let's look at Duke a little bit, Bill, as they move on now to Pontiac and will play the winner of Connecticut Xavier. Of course, if Connecticut survives, it's a replay of last year's regional final. And we know that Christian Leitner had one of his finest moments. What a shot by Moses. I'm telling you, there's a talent. There's a talent right there. Three three-point baskets by James Moses with 23 points becomes the game's high score. As I was just saying, Christian Leitner might have had his finest moment as a collegiate basketball player hitting that buzzer beater against Connecticut. So Connecticut might advance, and so could Xavier of Ohio. They have performed a lot of upsets in the past. Moses has fouled out of the game for Iowa. He has scored 23 points and electrified the crowd with a lot of long-range bombs. An excellent play. He just took the challenge on several occasions and showed that versatility that he has, hitting the three, as you mentioned, Dick, putting it on the floor, taking it to the basket, a little bit of everything. 10 of 14 from the field, and perfect in three attempts from three-point range. Here's Bill McCaffrey. You know, Xavier's been a team that has performed some magic in this tournament, surprising some teams. Got to respect them. They shocked me against Nebraska. I just didn't think they were going to be able to. If you asked me before the game, who did I think was going to win? I would have said Nebraska with their experience up front, their physical play. But with the young players that Pete Gillen's got up front, they're going to compete against the Connecticut front line. Crawford Palmer runs into Troy Skinner. What do you think Duke needs? Of course, you know, you say they get to the Final Four if they win a very tough region against Ohio State, among others, looking down the line. They want to win a national title. They were blown out by UNLV last year, and the UNLV looks to be better than Fort Big key is their perimeter shoot. Duke is excellent defensively. And that is consistent night in, night out for them. But at some point, as they move along, they're going to have to be able to hit the, the jump shot from the perimeter, the three-point shot, on a consistent basis. Because teams will be able to collapse in on Christian Leitner. If, if they, he can't do it on the inside, we know he can go outside. But that just, if he does, that has to do that on a consistent basis, that just hurts too. for Troy Skinner. And Marty Clark is fouled by Troy Skinner. Duke will move to 28 and 7 on the year. The Blue Devils have won 13 of their last 16 games with this triumph. You know Bobby Knight is glad to get that first game behind him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Forget about any easy, no such thing as an easy opponent. No, 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 and it's so difficult when you're playing somebody you've never seen before. You see a couple films and you walk in and you're sitting there and now you're getting a taste and a feeling for them. That's why I mentioned that coaches in the player in the NCAA tournament have to be ready to make those adjustments. You know, people ask Bobby Knight, we saw it on our pregame show before we kicked it off today. 
Uh, what about Florida State? A lot of times you don't get to see them until you look at the tapes. Well, he says, all I know about them is they're from Tallahassee. It, you know, as a coach, you ask your players to just concentrate on the next game. And that's what you have to do as a coach and prepare your ball club. You can't look for it further down the road than your next ball game. Crawford Palmer puts the exclamation point on the Blue Devils. But Bobby's remark was great. I think it's in Tallahassee. <laughs> Troy Skinner misses a three. And the final seconds take off here in Minneapolis and the Duke Blue Devils. And Mike Krzyzewski have advanced into the regional semifinals with a convincing 85 to 70 victory over the Iowa Hawkeyes. So Duke moves on and they'll play the winner of Connecticut Xavier coming up next here at the Metrodome. And our Chevrolet players of the game, James Moses of Iowa with 23 points, and Christian Leitner, who led the Blue Devils with 19 points. So another victory for the Atlantic Coast Conference. They've been very strong. They suffered a loss with NC State today, but Duke keeps them going in Iowa. Looking forward to next year. Now we look forward to our next ball game, which should be an exciting one. Xavier just playing excellent basketball especially at the end of the year I think that's going to be a well of a ball game against Connecticut so the Duke Blue Devils who are looking to get to the final four for the fifth time in six years have taken another step Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis back with more of our coverage in just a moment valve engine that takes it from 0 to 60 in only 7.5 seconds and still delivers an EPA estimated 33 of championship golf just $69 plus tax includes accommodations and unlimited golf reserve now at 1-800-277-0800 Tiger basketball has been brought to you by True Value Hardware you can do it with True Value Hardware Store. Buy your better...